island nation. Our lifeline to the world is the sea. Tankers transport fuel, container ships bring us essential supplies. And cruise liners carry holidaymakers near and far. But who are the faces behind these fleets? Meet the Merchant Navy. Across the globe, foreign shores, attractive pay packets and the challenges of the job draw over one million to the world of merchant seafaring. An industry on the increase, there is the continual need for new blood. Officer trainees who will take command of the fleets of the future. As we increase the number of ships we have, um, we have to find the people to run them. First-year deck officer cadets Nicola Whelan, Suzanne Kelly, Craig Dwan and Callan Macquarie have undergone a gruelling training schedule. It's real. It's dangerous. They had to make the grade at college to proceed to the next phase of training, three months at sea on a container ship. That makes 4%, so that'll do me. <laughs> Former trollerman Craig is confident at sea, but found the classroom much more difficult. Somewhat unfortunately, 42%. But after some stressful resets, Craig Dwan. Craig eventually made it through. He passed. That's me. Can definitely go to sea now. That's a huge weight off my mind. The pressures for Nicola were and still are very different. Having one failed career in physiotherapy behind her, at 29, she desperately wants to make this new profession work. I'm getting a little bit worried. Like, what if I can it manage? What if it doesn't all go to plan? <laughs> <laughs> For 24-year-old Suzanne, following her dream was crucial, but it didn't make saying goodbye any easier. When I'm away, I think I'll definitely miss my sister the most. My sister's my best friend, definitely. And leaving his island home of North Hewis was inevitable for school leaver Callum. Leaving the island is quite hard, but if I want to further myself, kind of good career and all that, I have to leave the island anyway. After their emotional goodbyes, these trainees took the 4,000-mile journey to Miami, where they are now scheduled to meet the Merce Gateshead, home for the next 12 weeks. Lying ahead is a journey that will take them to Manzanillo in Panama before traveling through the Panama Canal and across the Pacific Ocean to ports in Japan, China and Taiwan. But also facing them are the tough realities of life at sea, under the strict watch of Captain Mark Carter. Can you go and tell them whoever's making that noise to shut up? He runs a tight team and a tight ship. This is the toilet for the officer smoker and it's not clean to my satisfaction. The port of Miami on the USA's eastern seaboard. A 528-acre island which boasts being cruise capital of the world and sees over 1,700 container ships pass through its docks every year. In 2007 alone, this port handled almost 900,000 containers. Today, its latest arrival is the Gateshead, a massive container ship of nearly 51,000 tons. This vessel can carry up to 4,300 containers at any one time shipping everything from grapefruits to cars to life-saving blood plasma across the globe. Along with its new cargo, the Gateshead is picking up its latest cadets. And waiting at the dockside to meet them is training officer Mike Mullen, who knows how his new recruits feel when they first see the ship. First of all, shocked when they first come to, the, to see the size of this thing behind us here. It'll be a totally new environment. When they first get to the ship, the noise will be the biggest, the biggest thing they'll find. And this work goes on 24 hours a day. So tomorrow morning, I don't expect to see very happy faces. Ex-engineer Mike has been training on ships for the last seven years. To date, he's helped over 100 new starts through their first days at sea. Right. So what's your first reaction when you came to this? Let me see the size of it. It's a lot bigger than I imagined it to be. Um, a bit scarier as well. Just can't get over how busy it is and everything that's going on. Can't wait to get stuck in. Get ourselves on board then. It's their first time on a container ship. Everyone is keen to see where they'll be living during their time aboard. This is your space. 
The cabin's on the inboard side there. It's quite compact, but it seems to have everything I'm going to need. This is the shower room. When I first saw the ship the day, I was really, really scared. I thought I was going to throw up. So what's your, what's your thoughts on this? I was expecting a shoebox, basically, so I'm quite happy with this, yeah. For tall ship fanatic Suzanne, life at sea is the norm. Great to finally be on the ship. I mean, we spent so long waiting for it now. Stay just nicely. Home, home, sweet home. Eight hours of cargo operations later, and the gate's head is finally ready to set sail. It's been a long day, but for Callan and Suzanne, it's straight to work watching deck operations, while Craig and Nicola are stationed on the bridge. I think it's great for you. Somehow this just feels like home. We've sailed in quite well over the last few hours. Really, really good. I'm really excited, but it just feels like a complete dream. Just feel like I'm going to wake up any second and I'm going to be like, back in my bed at home. It's just turned 10 past midnight. And that's just at sea. I'm quite impressed the first few hours. Tomorrow will be a different day and let's, we'll, we'll go from there. But at the moment, it's looking good, looking good. Eight a.m. and Mike is already briefing his new students on what they'll be doing on their first day at work. We all have to take part in the lifeboat drill. So do you know your lifeboat stations? Being a cadet training officer is really, really a fantastic. I get to work with some wonderful young, young people. I'm seeing cadets wh who I trained up in the first trip I did with them. They are qualified now as officers, senior officers in some cases. And I get a great deal of pleasure of, of working with them. It keeps, keeps me looking younger, I hope, anyway. And it hasn't, it hasn't changed my taste in music. I still can't get used to the music. This morning's situation is the, the captain has now agreed to a half hour steering pattern. For Mike, this voyage is a particularly special one. It's my final trip on, on a ship, at, or seafaring as it is, and it's, it's a, I'm more relaxed with this one than anything else. It's, 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 I'm looking forward to finishing, but I'm not looking forward to finishing, if you know what I mean. It's, it'll, it'll be a big miss. Mike's retirement comes after a lifetime in shipping, which he started back home in South Shields. I was an apprentice in the shipyard behind me where, where, the, where the oil rig is, is moored a place called John Redheads. The noise was tremendous. There were riveters, there was corkers, there was the steel being bent and moulded into shape of the ship's sides. I started there at 15 and I finished at uh, 21. Then I went to sea. I didn't think at the time I'd be staying at sea for the time I have done. It's, it's been nearly 43 years this year. I, I, I won't be happy. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be quite emotional the day I, I come to leave the ship. That, that, that'll be certain. On the gate's head, day one on the job means instant responsibility for Callan and Nicola. Fourth officer Andrew Niven is about to let them steer. You get used to just doing small, really small operations. So. No small task when this ship is 292 metres long. I think it's going to be difficult to get the, the right movement. It's going to take a bit getting used to because Obviously, it's nothing like anything we'd have steered before. A bit different driving a car. Just kind of on edge right now, make sure I don't do anything wrong. My hands are like so sweaty. It's like unbelievable. <laughs> but this pressure is nothing. Andy has just broken some scary news. The captain wants us to be able to let them steer through Panama, so that'll be a good experience for them. But they need a lot of practice to get used to the way the ship handles. The Panama Canal is extremely narrow. Whoever gets steering duty here will have a tough time of it. I was actually talking to my mum just a few days before I joined, and um, I was saying, oh, I'll probably do my steering ticket quite soon. And I, I just joked, oh, no, wouldn't it be funny if I uh, got to steer through the Panama Canal? And then when I was taught we actually would be, I was like, oh, my. Out on deck, Suzanne and Craig are also getting hands-on experience on a job called chipping and painting. I think this is probably one of the less glamorous sides to the job. They're doing the cosmetic surgery to the, to the deck at the moment. Chipping areas where the rust is quite heavy built up. If we left it, 
you get huge paint blisters lying everywhere. The ship would be a, a, a rust bucket within, within 10 months. Probably not one of my favourite tasks, but... I think there's something satisfying in it when you get like a, a big massive chunk of rust or something and it all just like falls apart. Back up on the bridge, it's Nicola's turn to take the helm. Change the helm, Kursh 153. Okay, thank you. Small operations. Just like that, that's fine. It's kind of like them driving games in the arcade. When you're like totally oversteering and you just stand yeah. up like that. <laughs> And they've done okay for the first time. They'll get plenty of practice in before we get to uh, the Panama Canal, so we want them to get used to it, get, you know, focus on only one thing. But that doesn't involve focusing on relaxing. I've been here for about a day and I'm already doing myself at home. I'm now sitting in the pile at the master's chair. I'm quite comfortable. I'm enjoying things. Callan has just made a massive mistake. Coming up, would you sit in this captain's chair? The cadets are supposed to tidy this. That means that I should be rather cross. And preparing for the ship's inspection, Suzanne makes a gruesome discovery. I found old toenails, fingernails from like whoever was in here before. I was like, <laughs> The Merchant Navy, the world's trade lifeline. Essential for transporting fuel, commodities and passengers around the globe. For four young officer trainees, a career in this industry is their ambition. Tall ships fanatic Suzanne Kelly, former trawlerman Craig Dwan, ex-physiotherapist Nicola Whelan and school leaver Callan Macquarie have just finished five months of college. Now they've joined their first ship, the Gateshead. Home for the next three months, this 51,000-tonne container ship is scheduled to sail through the Panama Canal, across the Pacific Ocean and on to the Far East. Two days in, they're en route for Manzanillo in Panama and everything is living up to their expectations. I keep pinching myself, just like devil check that, is it really this good? I joined the Merchant Navy because I wanted to be at the sea. You know, I didn't even look at how much I got paid. <laughs> Ever since I was young, I've always loved being at sea, so... So, yeah, I feel, I feel great. Ex-physiotherapist Nicola feels this is her last chance for a successful career. I've tried a couple of careers before that haven't really worked out for us. Um, at the moment, I'm feeling really positive. It's very strange seeing a girl at 29 come to say as a cadet, so it takes a lot of guts, courage to take a, a, a lowly paid position on at her age. She looks like she's the strongest of the, of the bunch, to be honest with you. Training officer Mike Mullen is responsible for assessing the performance of his new charges. Craig being ex uh, trawlerman, it, you can see that. A little bit apprehensive at the moment because it, that's that's natural. Suzanne, she's, I don't think she's as strong as, as Nicola, but again, very keen. She's keen to learn. Young Callan, the, the youngest guy, he's a bit like me, he talks a lot. Once we get his, his tongue nailed down to the roof of his mouth for a, a few minutes, and to get on with the job, he's going to do it. Unfortunately for Callan, his ambition to be captain is already getting him noticed, but not in a positive way. On day one, he made himself at home in the captain's chair. I would like to think whose chair this is, in case it's a bit disrespectful, but it's comfortable right now, and that's all the matters. He came up to, straight away, took command of the captain's chair, which was a, a disturbing moment for most people on board, because we were, none of us would do that. That is the captain's domain, as we know. And I, I, I will, later on, I mention the chair, especially if the captain's around. And Mike is not only delivering a few words about the master's chair, Sunday means captain's inspection, and that means cleaning. The old man wasn't too happy taking off his seat on the bridge, I'm afraid. OK. And uh, when he's talking about anything, try and keep your tongue in, okay. listen to what he's saying, take it on board anyway. But the basic thing is, the vacuum the... The, the, the floor for the deck first at the floor. Take any loose objects or clear anything loose clothing away. Sunday morning, uh, half past ten, we always have a, an inspection of the vessel to make sure everything's clean and tidy. Hi, Suzanne, Nicola, how are you doing? Hiya. Hello. Hi. Are you ready for the big day? <laughs> yes. Normally, when they come in the cabin, if, if it's, everything's sort of flat, there's, there's nothing to take his eye away from anything else. Nice flat cabin, quite happy. Okay. See you later then. Cheers, See you. Bye. 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 Just over an hour yeah. to get everything done. Shouldn't be a problem. Suzanne's doing the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the 
This could be Callan's opportunity to impress the captain. But it seems there's no rush. In people's cabins, I expect it to be clean, dust-free, everything... Well, it, there's a term ship -shape. Everything to be ship -shape. I like cleaning, but just once in a while. <laughs> I'm not tidy at home at all. I would have my place. Look, Steam. as spotless as it can be. <laughs> Uh, it'll get done. If a crew member kept his cabin in a poor state, then obviously I would be cross. While some of the trainees clean their cabins, the rest of the crew are hard at work. There are always jobs to be done when you're part of a small team at sea. See, I've always liked my crew, even the bad ones. But the crew I have now are excellent, absolutely excellent. First class. Chief Engineer Ian Proudlock agrees. I think we're quite a happy team. We're always laughing and joking, but when there's work to be done, the work gets done straight away. The people make the ship. Ian's crew of four are a tight-knit team who ensure the efficient running of this 59,000 brake horsepower engine. The ship's like a, a swan. You see a swan on the water, you just see it floating along, but underneath, the legs are going. No, I think that's like this on a ship. Above decks. Morning, Jacek. Morning, Thaddeus. The captain has begun his rounds. I think we better make a start to this this cleaning. Sorry, great. Right. Here you are, Alec. Right, see you, man. Cheers. The girls are pushing on, but Craig and Callan may just have left things too late. Especially when the captain is so particular. And on the technique front, it's not looking promising for Callan. There's uh there's dirt there. I would go with everything that you can run his finger along the top of. Do I like inspecting people's bits? Not particularly, but it's part of the job. I think if you were some sort of bully, you'd love it. <coughs> Not a good time for a rest. This captain is about to lose his patience. The cadets are supposed to tidy this. Because I don't think it's tidy, I can see untidiness. That means that I should be rather cross. After some last-minute touches, it's time to get into uniform and await the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Who's down there cackling? Um, what's the, the girls and the, the... I don't expect to hear that. You go down and tell them, Mark. I don't expect to hear them cackling like that when I come around on the inspection. Things are not looking good. Good morning, everybody. Ladies first, and straight away, Captain Carter has some comments. Mike, I don't agree with that sort of stuff, OK? Toilet bowl's not clean. Putting some blue stuff down and doesn't make it clean. You need to scrub it. Dirty ashtray. Will the boys do any better? The sink isn't clean. Now for Callan's room. Whose cabin's this? It's clean on top of your picture now, because it's all on my finger. But despite that... Very good, actually. Right, thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. All in all, the captain's happy. There weren't any serious problems in the cadets' cabins this morning. It's just unfamiliarity, I think. I was just coming in the corridor, I was just getting more and more nervous for some reason. I think the captain was being quite strict this morning, just to let me know what kind of level he expects. I found all toenails and fingernails from like whoever was in here before. I was like, Ugh. I'm going to keep this immaculate between the hours of you know seven and twelve on a Sunday. <laughs> when I was a cadet, I was a shocker. After the stresses of the morning, the cadets have some time off. For Mike, this is an opportunity to take some time out in his favourite place on the ship. I've always found a need to, to take myself away from the noise, the hustle and bustle of, of, of a ship. And I find the forecastle is the quietest place on the ship. And once you get up here and you've got the, the sunshine, the, the sky, it's easy to switch off. Straight away, I, I can be in a park, uh, doing the things I normally do when I'm home, going coffee with my wife to a, 
uh, a coffee parlour down on the seafront. It's it's so tranquil, it's pleasant up here. This is this is this is home for an hour at least. Next morning and the Gateshead is approaching the Panamanian port of Manzanillo. While Callan and Suzanne are on bridge duty, Craig and Nicola are helping prepare for arrival. They've survived the first leg of their three-month voyage and things are looking good. Obviously a lot of hard work involved, but bonuses far outweigh how much work you have to put in. It looks cracking from here, man. This is the best, best seat in the house when you're coming into port. Absolutely amazing. Such an amazing sight, all the hustle and bustle of the container yard. Everything's so different. We're all just learning together. I mean, it, you know, we're all in the same boat. Not to sound really, that's a really bad pun. We're all in the same boat. Oh no, oh no. I've sailed with quite a few cadets. Some you can tell straight away you're in the wrong job. Some cadets look like they're going to go all the way, and these four look like they're going to be very good. I'm more settled now with the four cadets we've got after seeing. They've been on board for two or three days now, and it's, they're looking really, really positive thoughts oozing. It's great. Next time on the Merchant Navy, mixed emotions from Mike as the realities of looming retirement hit home. Being away from the sea and, and certain, certain days, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a miss. I don't know how I'm going to cope with that one. And the trainees experience one of the world's most amazing feats of engineering, the Panama Canal. I'm just gobsmacked. Sheer scale of it, you can't even imagine.